Hi friends, my name is Amanda, I'm a registered dietitian and today we're going to be talking all things magnesium. What it is, its role and function in the body, where we can find it, how much do we need, and is supplementation necessary? Let's get started. Magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in our body and is water soluble. Since it is a mineral, our bodies cannot produce it on its own, so we must consume magnesium through food or supplementation. Since it is water soluble, when consuming supplements of magnesium, you do not need to combine it with any food sources. Now magnesium in our food is widespread. We can find it in things like legumes, nuts, seeds, and leafy greens. However, more than two thirds of North Americans still fall short of the magnesium recommendations per day. You might be wondering, why is this so concerning? While magnesium is required in over 300 essential metabolic processes within the body, including blood pressure regulation, energy production, nerve signal transmission, bone remodeling, and muscle contraction. It's also a key structural element in our bone. 50 to 60% of all the magnesium in our body is actually found in our bone matrix. Believe it or not, only 1% of the magnesium is found in our blood. Symptoms of low magnesium can include irritability, fatigue, muscle crampness, insomnia, constipation, and even loss of appetite, nausea, and high blood pressure. So how much magnesium do we need in a given day? The recommended dietary intake of magnesium for adult women is about 320 milligrams, and for men, it's about 400 milligrams. Now these are just intakes to help you maintain current levels of magnesium. But if you're already deficient or have low levels, you actually might need more. And for those who take supplements for calcium, your needs for magnesium would actually be even heightened further. The reason being is that calcium and magnesium actually compete with one another in the small intestine for absorption. So if you take copious amounts of calcium and magnesium together, you're actually basically restricting both from being absorbed. So what does 320 milligrams of magnesium look like from food? Well, at lunch, you could have one cup of sauteed Swiss chard with half an avocado and a carrot. As a snack, you could have a banana with an ounce of pumpkin seeds and dark chocolate, the darker the better, of course. And for dinner, you could have a cup of steamed rice and then a cup of cooked cauliflower or broccoli. So you might be wondering, should you be supplementing with magnesium since it's so important? Firstly, I would request a red blood cell magnesium test from your doctor. This test will examine how your magnesium levels in your blood are for the past three to four months. Now again, only 1% of magnesium is found in our blood, but at least that can give us a good overview as to what your magnesium status is. Now, if you're going to be supplementing with magnesium, here are three common forms that you'll find in the stores. The first one is magnesium citrate. Magnesium citrate is magnesium combined with citric acid. This form of magnesium is highly absorbable, quite inexpensive, but in large doses can cause loose stools or even diarrhea. Interestingly, I actually take magnesium citrate with me when I travel to prevent travel constipation. A second common form of magnesium is magnesium oxide, which is a salt combining magnesium and oxygen. It's often prescribed for people who suffer from heartburn or constipation. However, from an absorbability standpoint, it's really, really poor. So unless you're suffering from heartburn or constipation and you're using it for that reason, I would actually stay clear of that one. Lastly, the third form of magnesium that's really popular is magnesium bisglycinate. Essentially, it's a magnesium sandwiched between two glycine amino acids. Amino acids are the building blocks of protein. I actually talk about glycine in my All About Collagen series. So if you haven't checked that series out, go ahead now and go back to my previous videos. Glycine is fantastic as a dietary supplement to help with things like insomnia as well as management of anxiety. So if you're gonna take magnesium bisglycinate, I would recommend taking it before bed. It's also highly absorbable, so it's another great option for those looking to supplement with magnesium. So the takeaway here is that magnesium is an essential mineral involved in over 300 metabolic processes. It is widespread in food, but about two thirds of North Americans fall short of the recommended daily intake of magnesium per day, which is 320 milligrams for females and about 400 milligrams for males. 
Now, if you do find out that you have low levels of magnesium, or perhaps you're taking a calcium supplement, so you, you could benefit from magnesium supplement as well, try to choose either magnesium citrate, but titrate yourself up as magnesium citrate does have a natural laxative effect. The other option is adding magnesium bisglycinate as part of your bedtime routine as it can also promote good sleep. I hope you found this video helpful and until next time, relish every bite.